In today's mission, we're taking this Mark II SSTO drone up to the space station to support a crew rotation. What it is, I am Controlled Pairs, this is Controlled Pairs Gaming, and it is so good to be back with the LKO show. Thanks for being so patient with this episode. I know it took a while for me to get around to making it come out, but in today's mission, we have a great little rendezvous plan. So I designed this Mark II SSTO drone to go up to the CPSS, the Controlled Pairs Space Station, rendezvous with the space station, dock with it, and support crew rotations in a reusable way. So we have the shuttle, we've been using that a lot in recent episodes. I wanted an SSTO that could be reusable and basically continuously conduct crew rotations at CPSS. This thing flies really well. I was actually really lucky with the way that I designed it and actually was able to fly it with such success on only my first try. So I actually flew it once up into orbit. I had to swap around some engines, but besides that, I didn't make any major adjustments and it works really well. Now that we're in the air, let's take a look at how this thing is designed back in the space plane hangar. So as you can see, this Mark II SSTO, which I call the round trip, is powered by four rapier engines, and it also has a total of five ram air intakes. Now, what's unique about it is it's actually a drone, so it's powered by a drone core, but it still has a crew cabin, so it can carry four Kerbals up to the space station, but they're not actually flying it, it's piloted from the ground. Now, inside the cargo bay, I've got two SAS modules, as well as all of my mono propellant, batteries, and a nuclear power source, and the cargo bay fits all of that stuff absolutely perfectly, and it looks really great as well. Additionally, I've added a docking port to the belly of this Mark II SSTO, and as a result, it becomes a little bit tricky to dock because I'm just not accustomed to docking anywhere but the nose, but it still works really well. All in all, I think it came out looking really good. If you look at some of the stats up at the top, we've got a Delta V of 10K, which is absolutely huge, as well as a part count of only 60 pieces, which is great as far as your frame rate and things like that are concerned. If you're used to flying anything that's big and crazy, you know exactly how difficult it can be. Whenever your part count gets too high, you end up running into a lot of issues. So as far as flying this thing, you saw me take off. I took off real steep. I achieved an ascent profile of about 45 degrees with respect to the Earth, or Kerbin, and I basically keep that 45 degree ascent profile until I cross over 12K, and as soon as I cross over 12K in altitude, I flatten out my trajectory and I accelerate rapidly, and that's what I'm doing right now as I cross over 22K, I hit action group number two, which switches those rapier engines from air breathing into rocket fuel mode. So now they are burning both oxidizer and liquid fuel. Additionally, that action group closes off my air intakes and so I am no longer receiving the drag of having those open air intakes. And we're going to continue to do this, we're pushing that apoapsis height up into about 96 to 100k because the space station is sitting right at 95k. So in order, in order to achieve the rendezvous with the space station so that we can then dock with it into our crew rotation, I need to push that apoapsis up to 95k which we do very easily. And then you saw me fast forward there through some of those orbital maneuvers in order to circularize once we get to the apoapsis. Now that we're waiting to get to the apoapsis to circularize, I take a second to inspect the ship, make sure that nothing was damaged during takeoff. Everything inside the cargo bay as well as the docking port seems to be in order, and the lights inside the crew cabin seem to be working as well. I go ahead and engage RCS, so I have some control now that we are in zero gravity. As we get to our circularization burn, I orient on that maneuver node and fire the engine as we've got just about 15 seconds left in that burn. We've got plenty of oxidizer and fuel left in order to circularize. I will admit that this thing, while it flies really well and it's very easy to control, it is a little bit short on fuel as I get up into zero gravity and actually need to do my orbital maneuvers. So I took a little bit longer here to rendezvous than I wanted to. If you have no idea what you're seeing on your screen right now, if you're kind of new to Kerbal Space Program and you want to learn a little bit more about it, I did an entire how-to series, like a Kerbal Space Program for Dummies series that'll teach you how to get into orbit, as well as how to rendezvous, just like you're seeing me do right now, and even how to design an SSTO. I'll put a link to that playlist on screen right now, so if you're interested in that, go ahead and finish watching this video, but make sure to go check out that as well. It's got a lot of great information, and I appreciate any feedback on it in any way I can improve it. So now that I've got that rendezvous, you see me sliding into CPSS, that is the Control Pair Space Station, 
which we've been building in our previous episodes. Now we are just one kilometer out and very slowly sliding in using those RCS thrusters to control the way that we translate with respect to the CPSS as we slide in ever so slowly. It's a very meticulous process. I think all in all this mission took me about 45 minutes to an hour to conduct. I've cut it down to about 10 minutes here for your expeditious viewing pleasure as always. After all, that's what this channel is all about. It's about highlighting the awesome moments in gaming. You guys don't necessarily need to see all the boring stuff in between. It's all about that really cool stuff that makes the video worthwhile. And I think that I, I really try to do a good job in this series and my other series of highlighting the stuff that really matters. So here we are, only 100 meters off of the space station now. We go ahead and we kill our velocity with respect to the target. So now we are floating in air or in zero gravity and no air actually with respect to the CPSS. We're going to go ahead and turn perpendicular to it. And after we ensure that we are absolutely floating in the atmosphere or in zero gravity right next to the space station, we're going to head over to the space station and we're actually going to take old Bob Kerman out on EVA. And he's going to run on over to the space mobility vehicle. After all, we are relieving him. He is coming back home to planet Kerbin to spend some time with his family. Jeb is taking his spot. But Bob's going to jump on the space mobility vehicle really quick. And he's going to go do a visual inspection of the Mark II round trip SSTO before it is cleared to dock at the space station. Just to ensure that there's no damage to it. That there's no risk of any mishaps. And also because it is an outstanding excuse to get this space mobility vehicle out. You guys know exactly how much I love flying this thing around. I figured I spent all that time getting it all the way up here with that last shuttle mission. I might as well put it to good use. And it's really fun to use, and um, you see how easy it is to control. We get over here to the SSTO, and we can clearly see that there's no major damage or anything. And I'm just enjoying floating around and we take a look underneath and the docking port is unobstructed and there is no damage to the undercarriage of the spacecraft whatsoever. So having confirmed that we are safe to go ahead and start our docking maneuvers, we take that space mobility vehicle back over to the space station where it will dock on the space tug. We kill off all, kill off all that excess velocity and then slide on over into position. And Bob very easily maneuvers to that docking node. He turns off his headlamp to make sure he's saving electricity. He's actually going to remain on EVA for the duration of the mission while Jeb go ahead and docks the SSTO. And then once Jeb gets all docked up on the space station, Bob will leave that space mobility vehicle and jump in the Mark II SSTO and go for a ride back down to the surface. So now we are piloting that SSTO over to the space station. And this was really tricky. I edited a lot of the docking sequence out, but this actually took me about five minutes. I'm so unaccustomed to having to dock with the docking port on the belly or on the spine of the spacecraft. And so it was very strange to me. I did right click on the docking port and I controlled it from that perspective. That helped a little bit, but it was still very difficult. I think I'm definitely going to download the uh, docking camera mod. I've heard a lot of good things about it. I've never actually caved and used it before, but after having to deal with this, uh, that go around, I'm definitely going to in the future. I could have very easily ran out of mono propellant while I was trying to do that maneuver, but I, I got lucky. So we finally did get docked up. As you saw, Jeb jumps out. He runs over to the hitchhiker storage container and he jumps on board where he will be remaining in orbit at CPSS for the foreseeable future. After Jeb gets on board his brand new home, we get Bob off of the space mobility vehicle and he slides on over to the SSCO and he scooches on over to the crew capsule and the hatch and he goes ahead and boards up. After that, we refuel the SSTO, make sure we've got plenty of aquadizer and liquid fuel to conduct our re-entry back towards the space center. And then we undock, we close up that Clampotron Mark II docking port and then we turn on those rapier engines in rocket mode and fly rapidly away from the space station. What a great view. And now we begin our re-entry procedure. So we orient prograde and we get on a suborbital trajectory back towards the space center. You can actually see behind the spacecraft there what looks like an asteroid or a speck off in the distance. That's actually Minmus, one of Kerbin's moons. It's smaller moon of the two, obviously. It's really cool whenever you have those kind of 
celestial encounters whenever you're just buzz buzzing around the atmosphere. So here we are on reentry trajectory. We're getting those heating effects. We got some thermometers up there on the front. Those are on the um, those are on the RCS thrusters. We were heating up a little bit, so in order to slow down and prevent overshooting the runway completely, we turn over on our belly, we pull back on the stick, and we conduct that last minute aero braking maneuver in order to bleed off speed, which reduces our speed down to just under 400 meters per second. And I fast forwarded through this approach, but you can see that aero braking approach basically turns into a big like split S maneuver, which actually lines us up with the runway very well. Now, this aircraft doesn't have any air brakes on it because I found that with its large wingspan and surface area, I'm able to aero brake pretty effectively. And because I'm coming back with so little fuel and oxidizer on board, the mass is such that the inertia while I'm flying doesn't build up too much, so it doesn't carry speed too terribly. And here, you saw it was right at 120 meters per second before I flared. Now my speed's dropping below 80 meters per second, and I am on track to make a nice, smooth landing back at the Space Center, right on the center line, right in front of the hangar, and we welcome Bob Kerman back home after several weeks in orbit aboard the controlled pair space station his mission is complete and i would like to personally thank you for watching this video i really hope that you did enjoy it if you want to see other stuff like this check out that video on the right that's our previous episode where we did a shuttle mission up to the space station and if you're interested in learning a little bit more about my channel click on that video on the left that's just a basic mission statement for what i do here on youtube and what i am all about and if you did like this and you want to see some more stuff like it make sure to subscribe to the channel for more i really appreciate it and until next time, this is Control Pairs, signing off.